Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Daniel Stern, the Code Whisperer, here with the first ever Code Along with the Code Whisperer. Now, we're going to get started in just a second. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and let's do some coding. All right, so here I am inside CodePen. And you can get there by going to codepen.io. And for this week's activity, we are going to program a game from scratch with JavaScript. It's not going to be too complicated, but it's going to be pretty fun. I've tried to make it kind of like a first person shooter type game. You know, that might set the expectations a bit high, but I still think it's going to be rad. So let's do this. Let's write some code. So let's start by setting up an event loop. An event loop is kind of part of any game and it allows for stuff to happen over time without users interaction. So we'll just set interval and make it every five seconds. And we'll just log event loop. And if we open up our console log with F12 or control option I, we can see that the event loop is fully running. So that's some good stuff. Now we're going to want to have enemies that we're going to shoot with the mouse. So let's make an array to hold those enemy references. And we'll define a maximum number of enemies too. I'm going to say five, but you can have anything. So basically, every time the interval runs, if the number of enemies is less than the total enemies that are allowed, the num enemies variable will add a new enemy to the list. So we'll say if the length of the enemies array is less than number of enemies, We'll just push a uh, new object to it. So we need a unique way of referring to every enemy so we can figure out what got shot. So what we'll do is we'll create a counter and we'll push the counter up every time we create an enemy and we'll give the enemy the ID of the current number in the counter. It's pretty simple. So we'll say let current ID counter equals zero and then whenever this is true, we'll say current ID counter plus plus. Then we'll give the enemy an ID of the current ID counter. And we'll clear our console log on the right and we'll update this log to just log our number of enemies. So let's log the whole enemies array and we'll also change this to run every 1000 milliseconds because it's too much. And so here is our good old enemies. You can see each one has an ID. So I get the IDs one through five going here. That's good. So what we're going to want is we're going to want these enemies to appear on the screen so something can happen when we click them. So for each enemy, we'll come up with a random x and y coordinate. So we'll just say math random times 500, which will give us a number somewhere between 0 and 500. That's for x, and let's do the same for y. Of course, you can change these numbers if you like. Ho oh, ho, that's looking pretty fun, ain't it? So we need some way to show these enemies on the screen. So we're going to make an HTML tag. And we'll just call that, we'll give an ID of enemies, or you can give it an ID of whatever you want. Or actually, let's call it enemy container and see if we can just refer to it in the script by just its name.
not count -tainer. Oh, I am the enemy count -tainer. I will count to 10. Thank you. I'm a very funny person. So we have this ID enemy container. Now let's just see if we can type in. I'm not sure if this is going to work. We'll just say enemy container dot inner HTML equals, and for now we'll just set it to the enemies set to JSON. We'll say JSON stringify enemies, and then the second two arguments will be null and two. That'll prettify the enemies for us. All right, cool. So you can see on the screen our array of enemies is showing up. Of course, it's not very much fun. I'm just clicking these things, nothing's happening. This isn't much of a game. Is it? No, it's not. So let's make it into a game by making stuff happen when we click the enemies. So what we want here is we don't want the enemy container to just have a stringified list of the enemies. So that's cool. We actually want to create a div for each enemy that we have. Each one's going to be its own div container. So this is actually pretty easy if you know anything about React because we can just say enemies.map. And we can return a div tag. Now, since this is in JSX, this has to be inside a string, but it still works. We can return a div tag and we can just have the div tag for now say the enemy.id. And so here each one is, it's a div tag that has an enemy in it. If you're wondering where these commas are, that's because it's still kind of the string. We actually have to join um, this map into a string with join. And the thing that will join the array elements is nothing. And so here's these little numbers representing our aliens to the left. So we'll give this div a, hmm, should we use a button or the div? Let's just use the div for now because that's what we have. And we'll just give it a class name or just a class, sorry, too much React for me, alien. So now in our CSS, we'll give the dot alien class a few properties. We'll give it a width and height of 64, I guess. and a background of sandy brown. Looking good, looking good aliens. And uh, then we'll give them each a margin so they're sort of standing out on their own there for a second. Cool. So these are some dope looking aliens. Next, we want them to show up on the screen in their random pre-selected position. So we'll go here where we define this enemy tag and we'll actually break this up so it's multiple lines. This is easier with a text editor, but we're working with what we can here. We're scrappers. We're a bunch of scrappers here on YouTube. So we'll give it a style. And we'll just say top for that style. And we're going to make that equal to enemy.x, or sorry, enemy.y for the top. Is that going to work? I hardly think that's even going to work. So it didn't break, but they're not actually at the right distance from the top. We have to give the alien div a position absolute to make that work. Where are you going? Where have you hidden aliens? Where are you? I only see one. That's not right. Hmm. So what's going on here? It looks like they're all kind of all kind of gummed up in this corner here. Why are all my aliens on top of each other? Do something wrong with my style? Style, style, style. What's wrong with you, style?
Hmm. No, something's not right. Let's let's see how to how to do this properly. Oh, I can't believe it. We're going to WW we're going to to WC3 school. So that's terrible. So there's my problem. I put my style in brackets like for React, but you're not actually supposed to do that. Just you're supposed it's supposed to be in a big old a big old quote. So good good for them. So why is this not working? I don't really understand because it looks right to me, but it's kind of hard to tell what's going on when you're writing your styles inside your CSS. Let's play around. Is the top is the top property blocked in this code pen? Let's try giving all aliens a left of 100 picks. That works. We have to specify pixels here by saying PX. Is that it? Is that going to work now? All right, that works. So the problem is you have to specify the PXs when you're doing that. And let's also give it a left here now of its X. And we can get rid of you, helpful left, that helped us. Top, da 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 da, left, enemy dot X. PX for pixels. Okay, cool. So now our enemies spawn in a random part of the screen. So they're just doing that and then they just hang out um, because none of them have been killed yet. And it's our job to, to kill them with some kind of superior laser gun, I assume. It's up to you because you can you get to use your imagination here, folks. So we're going to add a click listener to these alien divs. So whenever you click them, it's going to know and do a callback in our script. So here in the same old div, we'll do a click. And I can never remember if it's click or on click. But let's just try it with click and see what happens. So we'll just make it really simple for now. And we'll just say, on click, you know, I just do a console log that says hello. And we'll get rid of these console logs here since they're no longer really helping us out. And clear what we got going on here. So that is definitely not working. What is that? Is that on click? I don't want to go I have to go back to WC3 schools again, folks. Okay, great. So it works. So when you click this hello, when you click this button, each one things. So you know that our callback is working. So let's add a value. And since we're just doing whatever here, just going to be on the window. And we'll just say a window dot destroy alien. And you have to pass it the ID. And so we'll just stay once we correct the terrible syntax here that I've made. So we have that and then we'll have this when you invoke it just call destroy alien. and we'll pass it the ID of the alien. I think some kind of errors. Alien is not defined. Oh yeah, it's enemy. I, I'm mixing them up. To me, it's just the same thing. Cool, and so we can see here in our console that we're getting back to our callback. Now for the most exciting step. So when we call destroy alien, we're actually going to go to the enemy's array and we're going to find the enemy that matches that ID and we're just going to get rid of it. It's going to be easy. So we'll say enemies equals enemies.filter 
and for each one we're going to make sure that the enemy.id does not equal the reference ID. And so you'll notice that after we click there's a little delay because it's not re-rendering yet. So inside we'll make a function called render and it's just going to draw what we already have here on the page. So that's going to be in render where we update the HTML. We'll just call render here now in set interval. Excuse me. <laughs> now, after we've killed an alien here, we'll just call render. <laughs> cool. And we have a game, basically. These things show up. You click them. You got you to gotta click them. You got to take them right out because it's a game. It's a high stakes game where, where anything can happen, folks. Now, one last thing, it's not a game without a score, so let's give us a score. We'll let score equal zero. And whenever you kill an enemy, we'll say score plus plus, because you're gonna get a score. Actually, no, we'll say score plus equals 100. We're gonna give you 100 points every time you kill an alien. And in the render function, we'll actually make a new div with a container for score score container because we want to use that reference and here at the end of render we'll say score container dot inner html equals score So that's good, but, but where is their score container? I don't see it. Score container is not defined. Does it not like these self-closing tags? I can't find score container. Let's put score container above. Right, it's not liking these these tags that close themselves. I thought they're valid tags, but apparently they're not for code pen. So let's make them proper divs. All right. So that's it, we made a game. Thank you for joining us in this very first Code Along with the Code Whisperer. I encourage you to subscribe, to share this video, and to expand on this game, uh, make it better, and then share your results with me in the comments. And I'll be seeing you really, really soon um, for a video. If there's an idea you want for me to do Code Along with the Code Whisperer, please, in the comments, let me know, because I don't really have any ideas. And with that, adieu, YouTube.